partnership and collaboration is very much what events like Babco are all about. It's an opportunity to meet with colleagues, perhaps forge new relationships. Um, we're just taking a couple of moments here to talk about a new relationship in one hand, but a very long-standing relationship in another. And I'm joined here by Adrian from Etsy and the 3GPP and also from Tony from the TCCA, who are here to talk about, I guess, uh, a, a new phase of a, of a partnership between what you guys do. So uh, who should I come to you first of all? Adrian, tell me about um, what you've been doing at Etsy recently and about how that is changing now a little bit or, or being augmented with what Tony's doing with the TCCA. I mean, we've been working with TCCA for many years now. Um, from our side, we are very good at writing standards, that's what we do. Mm -hmm. But of course, for standards to be effective, they have to take into account the end user requirements. So we rely on Tony and TCCA in the case of public safety to say to us, well, this is actually what we need. Um, when we start that engagement, perhaps our first response is, well, we don't actually understand what you need. So we have this iterative process to make sure that we fully understand how it is that our standards will be deployed uh, once we have finished with them. Um, what's happening more recently, of course, is that we started this engagement in a 4G context. We were in an LTE environment and we were adapting LTE to meet Tony's users' requirements. Now, of course, everyone's talking about 5G, and as we design the 5G standard, it's really important that we capture the more futuristic and more ambitious um, plans that public safety and critical communications users have. Um, so uh, this is the next phase of our joint relationship. Indeed. Now, as we said earlier, earlier on, that your relationship with Etsy goes back an, an awfully long time, right back to the Tetra days. Tell me more about that, Tony. Yeah, well, Adrian and I are both so old that we actually remember the beginning of that relationship, and it is more than two decades old. Um, so TCCA, then the Tetra Association, mm -hmm. was focused in Etsy on working on what became the Tetra standard. Mm -hmm. And that has served the critical communications community hugely well and become the de facto standard worldwide for primarily voice communication. Yeah. So as we've moved on and in the last six, seven years, the users now require more bandwidth, more applications, video, and all the other great things. And that's why we went back to Etsy and through Etsy to 3GPP to say, now we want this global broadband standard called LTE to match our critical communications requirements users, which incorporates things like group communication, one to many, device-to-device um, -device communication. And all of those things were, of course, anathema to the 3GPP community that was serving you and I with our smartphones and just making phone calls and looking at Facebook and all the rest of it. So we've gone through now five or six years of educating one another once again, on, on our side, how on earth do we work in this huge global community called 3GPP that makes these primarily commercial standards for 10 billion users? And how do we get our voice heard? And from the other side of the coin, what on earth is it that these little guys called critical communications want from us and, and why should we be interested and, and how do we do it? So I re truly remember sitting in some early 3GPP meetings, which happen a lot and all over the world, by the way, um, putting my hand up and saying in answer to the question, well, what's group communication and how do we do that? Have a look at the Tetsi, Etsi standard. Yep. So, you know, we, we have a, a sort of end-to-end -end continuum there of starting in, in narrowband, now in broadband, and now we're moving towards the 5G era and still working closely together and actually being jolly good friends at the same time. <laughs> Well, it, it certainly sounds as though it's a relationship that makes an awful lot of sense. Standards, making sure that they are applicable, valid, uh, and meet the needs of the people who are going to be using those standards ultimately. What does this mean for end users? What is the real benefit, if you could articulate that, of this uh, enhanced partnership that really we're, we're talking about here, Adrian? 
And I think one of the reasons why the critical communications community came to 3GPP and made this plea to adapt our standards to meet their needs was that they could see the benefits of scale. So if you're building on a standard that already has global scale, then the market economies are obvious. Um, traditionally, the Tetra market is actually a very small market. It's rather bespoke. And so you don't have that whole concept of, of globalization and, and mass market. Um, so that's the first benefit, really, of, of aligning with, uh, aligning with the um, mobile cellular market. You have this, this large economy of scale. The other added benefit, of course, which is inherent in any standardized solution is that you have a multi-vendor environment so you're no longer tied to one particular vendor for your network deployment you can have multiple suppliers and you can change from one supplier to the other and when you do that you want these products to be fully interoperable which again is the third major byproduct of a standardized solution so you have you have economy of scale you have multi-vendor environment and you have interoperability and, and ultimately, Tony, this will just make life easier, um, more choice, uh, more reliability for better your members. Cost, better yeah. cost, you know, economies of scale, as Adrian says. So, you know, now our end users and the people who are buying services and equipment to service their public safety or other critical communication users' needs have a global market of multiple vendors to, to choose from. They're not locked in. They don't have uh, any problem of price competition. It's all there. The, the, the suppliers are all fighting one another and fighting to be innovative on top of the standard. Yeah. So maintaining all the benefits of standards, but innovation and differentiation based on a standards environment are very important to deliver the best quality of, 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 of sure. experience to the users. And of course, another area in which Etsy uh, in this industry has been particularly uh, active with, with regards to testing as well. I've been reading about your MCX, Mission Critical for Voice, and also for video and doing lots of testing in that area and keeping on iterating that testing as well. That's really, really important to prove that the standards are being implemented correctly and interoperability across the different vendors and so on is, is where, it, where, where it needs to be to enjoy this robust platform. Indeed. I mean, we often talk about uh, these interoperability events and and the percentage of pass rate, which typically is 80 or 90 percent. From my point of view, actually, I think it's more interesting to talk about the failure rate because mm -hmm. what we want to know is why did 10 percent of the uh, tests actually fail? And there are always good reasons. In, in many cases, it's because the interpretation of the standard was different. Maybe the standard is ambiguous yes. and two intelligent people can interpret it in an entirely different way. So that the whole point is not really to show how clever or how good we are through interoperability testing. It's having that feedback loop that says we, we think there is an area for improvement here and we need to make that improvement and, and then actually build towards a hundred percent pass rate rather than just 90 percent pass rate. Sounds to me as though interoperability is uh, all part of what we're talking about here, increased communication, making sure that the needs of the users are properly implemented in standards and then that the technologies that are applied against those standards all work together very, very nicely. Everyone's a winner from all of this. Uh, listen, Adrian, Tony, thank you very much indeed for joining us here today. I wish you all the very best with your future collaboration. Thank you. Thanks a lot.